nice emblem now. That. that could be the beginning. Goodbye. Hello, it's me Chris Evans doing another uh, video of the day. Well, technically, at Whitby Goth weekend. I mean, the bridge where everywhere that bridge gets very packed and it's a nice, glorious day. <laughs> so, I just hope it was like this tomorrow. So, I'm just going to be a little underwhelmed. Goodbye. Yeah, we know that. Sorry. <laughs> Can't get this bloody hill. Oops. It's the home stretch. Well, I'm on my way home now from the journey of um, the Whitby Goth weekend. I'll put a massive video on, including I've got a t-shirt. <sighs> This is it. I'll be definitely coming again, but not at November time. So, just, I never felt so, I never felt so nice today, wearing these outfits doing photo shoots, which are your, including this is going to help, help uh, my um, thing with steps. Uh, yeah. So, I'm on a journey home, and I'll try to get as many videos of the journey back home as I can, including the uh, take a photo of. Uh, I've got. I'll get a photo of a um, Mosby topping. So, bye bye. <laughs> Pier Road was originally built about 1875 over the sandy banks of the river. Prior to this time, the crag was the only way from the town to the shore. The new buildings to your left are in fact new frontages, built after that time onto the banks of the riverside buildings, which originally faced onto the crag. Coming up on the left, the award-winning Quayside Restaurant was once a public bathhouse, museum and a library. In the late 1890s, it said, Bram Stoke had carried out research for his gothic novel, Dracula, in the first floor library. Ahead on the left, the building with the large bay windows is the popular Magpie Cafe. Built in 1750 as a merchant's house, it was later used as a pilot's office. The pilot would have had an excellent view of any activity in the harbour and on the river axe. Whoa, oh, look at that. I can see the bride on that. Ahead on the left is the Lifeboat Museum, in a building which served as a double boat house for the RNLI between 1895 and 1957. The museum now houses the last growing lifeboat used in the British Isles. Oh. 
Since then, there have been three notable landscapes. 1870, 1923, and more recently, in 2012. The Padwick. So I bought me some new ones. Thankfully, I didn't spend too much money. If you follow the uh, route past the quarter deck cafe, you'll find money. yourself on Battery Parade. Spend too much on your As the name suggests, and, uh, it was where several defence cannons stood in the early 18th century. I know what to do next Round week. White buildings but I'm going to try to get to the Abbey, which held the gun to finish the off this Whitby Goth weekend. And also used as in customs style. knockouts to control revenue collection. Goodbye. Pilot board. Hello, my name is Christopher Evans. I was at um Whitby Goff today, Whitby Goff weekend today, and basically my demonias bro broke. Well, didn't broke. It was just a fabric, and basically buy some new ones. This is just a, sh a short photo video because there is parts of it in video form. So I'm just showing you some of these videos. I just hope some of you might see yourselves, but but it's tricky. But it's how I did my recordings. Even I was on an open top bus, but I did have a. I've got a book, and I plan to do an um, a talk tomorrow, on my YouTube about next year's two thousand twenty five journey up there. So, yeah, so, uh. Yeah, so I got Below, on the left, the flats occupy and the site of the Whitehall shipyards. Which yeah, well, that's my destination. So, Whitby Abbey, dead ahead. As steam ships maybe. were getting so, larger during the late goodbye. 19th century, it was getting harder to transport the steel needed to build them in Whitby. At the meeting, many religious decisions were made, including the fixing of the date of Easter. In about AD 867, the Abbey was ransacked and almost completely destroyed by Vikings. It wasn't until around 1070 that the Normans re-established a monastic community here.